Okay, today we're going to be looking at the Meiji Restoration of the P Japan. So let's look at the big ideas first. Uh, the first one is describe the main reforms under the Meiji government. Second, explain how problems in Japanese society and the opening of Japan to other countries led to the Meiji, re uh, the Meiji Restoration. Third, compare the restoration of Japan to the unification of Italy and Germany. And finally, identify the causes and consequences of major political revolutions. So, first thing we need to look at is a little map of Japan. In 1603, the Tokugawa shogunate takes over Japan, and they pretty much close Japan off to all foreigners. Um, they have very limited trade with the Dutch in Nagasaki, and they prevent their own people from leaving Japan. And they reinstituted centralized feudalism with daimyos, who were the landholders, uh, controlling their land uh, with peasants working the land, so on and so forth. Um, the daimyos, who are the landholders, only had wealth through land and agriculture. There is no commercial economy in Japan. And for the many merchants who are wealthy, um, they hold no political power. So the daimyos are upset, the merchants are upset, and the peasants, like we see all over the world at this time, suffer under heavy, heavy taxes. So, um, we kind of have to look at China real quick. China had lost what is known as the Opium Wars to Britain, and Britain forces China to sign these unfair treaties, basically opening up China to Britain. And this worries Japan. China is just across uh, the Sea of Japan. Uh, and Japan's biggest fears come true. In 1853, Commodore Matthew Perry of the United States sails into Tokyo Bay. Right here. And with him, he carries a letter from the U.S. President Millard Fillmore, which demands that Japan open its ports to diplomatic and commercial exchange. Fully well knowing that Japan couldn't defend itself against the U.S. Navy, it's forced to open up its ports. And so in 1854, they're forced to sign the Treaty of Kanagawa, uh, and Japan agrees to open two ports to American ships, uh, but not for trade. And like the Chinese, after the Opium Wars, uh, the Japanese are humiliated by this, that a foreign power can come in and kind of tell them what to do. So what happens is that in 1867, the daimyo and samurai of Japan lead a revolt against the Tokugawa shogun. And um, they place 15-year-old emperor Mutsuhito in power. Uh, that's this guy right here. And no, this picture is not from when he was 15. Uh, he's going to end, uh, take the name Meiji, which means the enlightened rule, or enlightened rule. They move the capital from Kyoto, the historic capital, to Edo. Uh, Edo is where the shogun had lived. Uh, and they rename the, the capital Tokyo, or Eastern Capital. Uh, the young emperor is going to begin the long, his long reign, which is known as the Meiji Restoration. And this is going to last from 1868 to 1912. Um, and he and other leaders of the Reformation are going to adapt the motto, a rich country, a strong military. So the first thing they need to do to reform the country is replace the feudal system with a new government and revamp the economy, replace it with an industrialized economy. So in 1871, members of the government are going to travel to Western countries, uh, in Europe, other places, looking to create a government like they have. Uh, and in 1889, the Meiji Constitution is going to be adapted. And in this Constitution, some of the ideas, uh, all citizens are equal before the law, we've heard this before, um, the emperor have absolute power. Very similar to Germany after its unification. It also creates what is known as a diet. This is the legislature. And there's two houses in uh, the diet. One is elected and the other one is appointed by the emperor. The Japanese are also going to use technology to enhance their military. No longer are the samurai going to be the only wars in Japan. Uh, that will not work out on a worldly scale. All men will be subject to military service, and they're going to use technology like the Western countries had um, been using. 
In terms of the economy, the Meiji government is going to encourage Japan's businesses to adapt Western methods. So the Japanese are simply just stealing and doing everything the Western countries of the world were doing. Why? Because it had been successful. So what did they do? They set up a modern banking system. They built railroads to help increase trade. They improved their ports so outside trade could come in and leave their country. And they organized a modern telegraph and postal system. Also to spark industry, the government is actually going to build factories and then sell them to wealthy families in the country. This is where families like the Kawasaki family would soon rule over industrial empires. And because of this, industry begins to boom. The silk industry booms due to new machinery, um, shipyards, copper and coal mining, steel making all begin to increase, and soon Japan becomes an industrial power. Along with this, like we had seen in Europe, uh, like we will see in Europe, the population will boom too. Uh, with many peasants flocking to cities for work. The final thing we need to look at is what does Japanese society look like after the restoration and during it. Um, well, the constitution officially ends legal distinctions between classes. Um, and the government is going to try to educate the populace. They set up schools and universities and actually bring in Westerners to teach. However, even though legal distinctions between classes had been ended, the class distinctions still remain. Um, and this is especially true for women, who are still seen as secondary members of society. And throughout the 1870s, uh, a debate is going to rage on in Japan, on <laughs> really, what to do with women, as if that's a, a question. Um, and what this leads to is a, is a horrible thing for right, the rights of women. In 1898, women are going to be forbidden to participate in politics and pretty much lumped into the same group of legal standing as minors or children. Um, however, despite the discrimination, and you could essentially say the human rights violations, um, Japan is going to modernize with amazing speed after being pretty far behind. Um, big part of this is their ability to learn from other countries, like Western countries, like China, um, and this is why they're able to modernize so fast. Um, so much so that by the end of the 1890s, Japan is strong enough to reverse the unequal treaties that they had been forced to sign, like the one with the United States, and they actually begin to acquire their own overseas empire. So, let's look at the big ideas before we go. First one, describe the main reforms under the Meiji government. We saw class, or social reforms, economic, government, military. Uh, explain how problems in Japanese society and the opening of Japan to other countries led to the Meiji Restoration. Compare the restoration of Japan to the unification of Italy and Germany. I know I didn't do that, but if you've watched the previous videos, you should be able to take some time and do that on your own. And finally, identify the causes and consequences of major political revolutions.